Yeah, we're live. We're live. Yeah, Jeff Conkle, we're not late. I was just going to wait five minutes because I um, thought that Are we live, are we? Yeah, we're live, yeah, sorry. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not... Yeah, I was just saying yeah, to great. Jeff, like, I, I was just giving it five minutes because I thought that YouTube notifications went out, but Paul has just reminded me that it probably only does it when you go live, so... Ooh, yeah, we're I'm live. Not much now. about that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. we're live, and I've got PJ, as always, my brother, my wingman. And we've got Paula joining us tonight. How are you doing? Hiya. Hello. Oh, good. Hey, Paula. <laughs> so, I've um, I decided to do this stream, um, the nature of God and um, the divinity of Jesus Christ. The reason I want to talk about this is I'm going. I'm going to have to go into a story if you don't mind. If you'll just um allow me to parlor and um, pj oh, when when i were asking out for jesus and he finally showed himself to me um it's, <laughs> and it sounds crazy to say this like but he used jovis witnesses to get me established i spent a full year with jovis witnesses doing bible study and as we know, Jesus says there'll be many, there'll be many Christ. And Jehovah's Witnesses teach a different Christ to what you'll read in Bible. And that Christ that they teach is that uh, is a created being, is an angel, is Satan's brother. It pretty much parallels along with like Mormonism, even like they, they think um, Jesus is Satan's brother. And um, so they were teaching me this, and I never owned a Bible in my life. And they fetched me this Bible. So I'm reading a Jehovah's Witness Bible, and I don't know if anybody out there has ever read a Jehovah's Witness Bible, but there's things changed in that Bible to, you know, they call it the New World Translation. There's things changed in that Bible that goes a long way what they're trying to teach. So I'm I'm getting taught by Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm reading a Jehovah's Witness Bible. They're telling me that Jesus ain't God. Jesus is an angel. It was called Michael in heaven. You know, you know, blah blah blah. But although they've changed some things in that scripture, it's still uh, and this is only through glory of God. Do you know what I mean? It still touched you. I really wanted it to be. So. Um, they're telling me that Jesus ain't God, blah, blah, blah. And I'm reading that, hold on a minute, Jesus is God. <laughs> you know, so that was how I started into the Bible. And then um, I, I decided to get a King James. And then at the minute I read a new King James just because I don't want to read their Bible. You know what I mean? But the the, the point being is, there's all these different Jesuses, you know. Yeah. There's a Jesus in in Quran. There's a Mormon Jesus. There's a Jehovah's Witness Jesus. But there can only be one. Exactly. And I'm reading Bible now. We're truly open eyes, and this is what I want to discuss. <laughs> so, what, what cool. what's your views, PJ? Um. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm where you're at. You're at. I mean, what, what I believe that the, the word says, that's it. How I, how I see it, and how, how, how I translate it seems to be pretty much same, same, same way as you. Um, but Brian, I all have our minor differences here and there. Yeah. As long as the doctrine's right, I mean, uh, to me, it, 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 it's okay. As long as it's nothing major that you're um conflicting about or something like that or debating about or whatever as long as it's not a doctrine or salvation issue do you know what i mean then well, um well, well that's it i, I, like, I mean I like, the, the, sorry the, there's a lot of false doctrine out there and um i i can i put it like when, when 
after I moved away from Jehovah's Witnesses, I, I, I'm then starting to watch YouTube and I'm watching people teach about things on YouTube, this and other. But mm-hmm. not always are they teaching you true doctrine either. And I think that you need to be praying for the Holy Spirit and you need to be reading the Bible yeah. and you should, you know, you should. Yeah. What What's your thoughts, Paula? Yeah, I mean, the Bible itself says it isn't as though you can't understand the words in the Bible unless you're saved. But if you are saved, you'll have insights because they don't come from you that you wouldn't have otherwise. And God will lead you to truth if you're seeking truth, if you're seeking him. So, but we have to know who he is. And I think it's a, a tragedy that too many Christians can't even agree on who God is, who Jesus is, and how to be saved. I mean, we can't even get off first base. Well, uh, yeah. just for everybody who's listening and who's watching, the reason I choose Paula to speak to on these things is she's been a long time Christian. She's pre YouTube internet. You know what I mean? I, I've been deceived by YouTube, so I, I need to move past that and. I, I pray on Bible and I pray that the Holy Spirit leads me into all understanding when I'm reading Bible, but I also like mm-hmm. to go to people because, you know, people have things to offer. So that's why Paula's on stream. That's why we're talking with Paula now, and Paula's going to present shortly. Um, Can I just say, John Hawkins, just be careful what you say, dude, because there's no need to be... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to address chat now. Like, we're going to talk yeah, about some no, things. There's no need, there's no need to be so... Um... Yeah. Derogatory towards people, yeah. Well, Sean, Sean, I say, ignore Sean for a minute, but I I just want to say in chat to everybody, right? What I'm going to talk about tonight and what Paul's going to talk about and PJ might not necessarily jive with you. Um, Mm. but I pray that everybody's blessed from what we talk about. But please don't, you're all wrenchers, right? There's no other than Sean Hawkins, you've all got wrenches like so you can't time each other out. So please be respectful to each other. I don't want to see things like you're a lukewarm Christian. I don't want to yeah. I, I don't want to see them kinds of attacks. If we can't talk about these things and be grown ups and be human human beings without being nasty about it. I mean, we, we all have some common ground, I hope, that Jesus is the only way that we can be saved. So exactly. if we can move from that, there's no need for attacks on that light. But PJ will be watching chat for me anyway. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, we're talking about, is Jesus God? And what's the nature of God? And, and these things are intertwined. You know, like the nature of God also tells you that he is God. So that's what we're going to yes. talk about. I'm probably doing a poor job of explaining that, like, but where do you suggest we start, Paula? Well, um, if you could share my screen, I've got it ready to go here, queued up. And like I said, just before the show, I just want to get some little thing out of the way first about, we've been told that we're a cult. We've been called our little group here, the truth cult. Mm. Uh, and I found this definition on American Heritage Dictionary, a religion or religious sect generally considered to be extremist or false with his followers often living in an unconventional manner under the guidance of an authoritarian charismatic leader or followers of such a thing or uh, a system of ritual and, and so forth. We're none of those things. We're just friends who have certain things we agree on and would like to express our views and this is not a cult. Uh, disagreeing or or having standards is not a, what makes a cult. Yeah, like I luckily through grace of God escaped a cult, which is Jehovah's Witnesses. You know what I mean? And right. uh, once, because, once you've had your eyes up into a cult, you know what's cult like. Right. And mm-hmm. I've never been to a church parlor. You know, and, other than when I was at junior school and we used to go once a week and they, that were part right. of being in school. I've never been to a church. It's kind of hit or miss and more miss than hit these days. There are good ones, at least here where I live, but you still have to be careful because 
uh, I, I still wouldn't classify them as cults, be, even you know if they're evangelical at least, because they they don't typically have the kind of worship that you see like of TV preachers. I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them, but no, no, um, no, exactly. there are good communities of Christians that help the poor and give aid when something disaster happens, and, and they keep to the basics and and all that but there there is a lack of bible study yeah, yeah. so yeah. i'm just gonna the, the, there's some along lines of cult that's going to tie into what we're talking about and that's um catholicism and what they believe on the nature of god and it, this is a, a thing that you find on youtube it's like uh you know trinity is that's catholicism you know, it's it's rubbish. You know, you're being deceived, like. But yeah. they also teach about Jesus and he died and come back, and you know. So, for for me, you've got to throw. If, if you're going to go along them lines of thinking, well, they teach Trinity, that's a lot of rubbish. Then you've got to throw the rest of the Bible out. Right. <laughs> you it's know what I mean? It's a poisoning the well fallacy anyway, because they, these certain bad people teach something that if you teach it too, you're just like them or you are been fooled by them and you got your teachings from them. And uh, like you say, I mean, with the Catholic Church, especially, at least they also teach that Jesus rose from the dead. So now what? You know, you can't, it's, it's a fallacy, poisoning the well. And so you can't just use that as an excuse to, to hand wave dismiss somebody because they have a belief in common with the Catholic church. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah. And so mm. we can't, we and, have to recognize that's bad. And like, we, we all know that Satan's at play in this world and he wants as much confusion uh, as he can get, you know, it's like right. a little bit of truth here mixed in with some lies and some more lies. There and right. some bit, you know what I mean? It's like, he wants you never right. to come to truth. Because it makes it more, it makes the, the lie a lot more easy to to believe. If you if you mix it in with truth, exactly. you hear the truth and it's confirmed. Then you hear a little bit of lie from that same person. Yeah, exa the exactly, truth. Some, some of the best lies yeah. revolve around exactly. truth. Of course, of course. Right. So and that just, being said, um, where do we start, Paula? Yeah, and the Bible tells us to be discerning, and that's what it is. It's it's keeping what is true and, and discarding the rest. So uh, I thought I'd start with a definition because there's three main ways of looking at the nature of God. On one extreme, we have, no, Jesus is not God. Um, you, God is an absolute unified one. Um, and I argued against that in a debate on the nature of the Messiah. Let's see, and this one here, I, I'll put this link in the chat since I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah. And um, there I argue for not only is Jesus absolutely divine, but also there are at least two entities called God in the Old Testament. And this is fairly long and involved. And, you know, I'm just kind of scrolling real fast. I've got all sorts of sources and things like that. So that's one end. The other end is what is called here modalism which basically means that like I've got highlighted here, a modalist views God as one person instead of three persons and believes that the father, son, and spirit are simply different modes or forms of the yeah. same divine person. Um, and they believe that uh, God, the father suffered on the cross, uh, which to that, I would click quickly say, then Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It makes absolute yeah. mincemeat of that statement and makes it yeah, oh. nonsense. Yeah, and yeah, that speaks to me as well because at, at the point Jesus was on cross, Father had to leave him as just a man, you know, so that yeah. he could he couldn't, he couldn't be that, that perfect yeah. sacrifice yeah. for for us all, you know. Yeah, right. So he couldn't look at that point. Therefore, he felt forsaken, you know. The man, the man side yeah, of him at, at that man. point on cross, um, God poured all his wrath out on him, and, and he was just a man. Exactly. That, that's exactly. how I take it to say, anyway. So that's the other end. Of, the, of course, the Trinity, belief in the Trinity is between those two extremes. It doesn't mean that that makes it right or wrong. It's just on this spectrum of views on God, we're kind of between the two extremes of either Jesus is not God at all, or 
the fullness of the deity in bodily form means that there is no separate father, son, and spirit. Yeah. And well, that, uh, that's why I mentioned Catholicism, you know, because they, yeah. they, 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 uh, we all know Trinity is not mentioned in Bible. Not if by you read, if you read Bible, yeah. you know that. But Trinity, uh, sorry, Catholicism teaches Trinity. But of course, Catholicism is the bad religion, you know. Out it says is you can't, you know what I mean? But we're back again to what I said earlier, like, you know, Satan wants these things merged together. He wants gray lines, you know. It's... Mm -hmm. Right. And today it's mostly known the the monarchianism or modalism is oneness Pentecostalism. So if it's, they usually just say oneness. And I think that's what we run right. into more most today online is the oneness Pentecostalism. So anyway, they say that... Um, you know, God is an absolute numerical one. And in spite of like when uh, the other instance beside Jesus on the cross is when he was baptized. So we got Jesus standing there, the Holy Spirit descending as a dove and the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Um, <laughs> we, and we, say, you know, sorry, Paula, sorry to speak of you, but that to me speaks out of Trinity. Right. And <laughs> the, the uh, workaround, if I can call it that, <clears throat> is that, well, God can just do this. He can be, look like all the world, like three separate per persons, but it's just, you know, he can just manifest in three different things at once. And I'm like, well, that's a special pleading fallacy. Um, it's moving the goalposts because as soon as we find basically what we could call a black swan here of separate entities who make one God, then they'll say, well, that's just something God can do. So it's an unfalsifiable theory is what I'm saying. And so um, that's why I'm not a modalist. And obviously because of that other document I showed, I'm not a, uh, I don't believe that, you know, there's three different terms. One is monotheism. One is tritheism. And then there's Trinitarianism. Mono is one. Tri is three gods. Yeah, and the Trinity is neither of those things. Yeah. And then polytheism is many so, gods. So we're, we're back again, like I said earlier. Like but Jesus warned that there'd been many Christs. Mm. You know, so right. we're, we're back there again. Well, there's the thing is that if we're trying to figure out what the Bible's teaching, we even though the Bible does say, yes, there will be many false Christs, it's throughout both testaments talking about one Messiah. My, Messiah means the anointed one, the one set apart. Christ is the Greek form, and they both mean, and came to mean in time, also over the course of the writing of the Bible, came to mean a specific person, and by the first century when Jesus came, Christ had become actually a personal name. So they were saying, the Christ means you are the anointed one, you are this specific person mentioned in scripture. Yeah. yeah. So... But anyway, that's just kind of the, I mean, I might, like I said, I'm, I might go over more detail in a video on my channel sometime, but I, I also got some scriptures up here. The ones like you mentioned, Michael, before our show about yeah, the that. Ones, because like, uh, um, I, w I was speaking to Paula earlier and I were in, um, I were in a discord group where, um, what they call them now, Paula. Hebrew roots, Hebrew roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I were, I were in a Discord group with Hebrew roots, uh, and they're a different argument to even this. But these were some of the things that were thrown against me. Like you know, I were arguing Jesus was God. They went have right. that. Right. That that debate I did um, was more about against Hebrew roots. Yeah. Who deny his deity? So. Yeah. But I got Isaiah. Well, like, <laughs> Oh, is deity and uh, and the nature of God are it, the light like, the cross paths? You know what I mean? It's like you can't it, from from our RC, You can't have one without other. You know, right? Right. And and this is what I point people to is Hebrews nine. I don't have that up right now on the screen, but it explains that in order for a new testament or a new will to be in effect. The one who made it has to then prove to die. And since the old covenant was between God and Israel, then God had to die. There's no way around right. it. And Jesus said at the Last Supper, this is my blood of the new covenant. 
So therefore, since Jesus died to enact the new covenant, then Jesus must be God. There's no other way. There's no other. Uh, this is absolutely the salvation message that God took on human form, as it says in Philippians 2, 5 to 11, that he did not think it was robbery to be equal with God, but set that aside and became human and humbled himself. And this is where you yeah, get into, even lower than angels. Yeah and, mm, yeah, and this is where you get into why he could, how he could pray to himself. Well, he wasn't. Even though he is God, he has added this human nature to his being. And this is both in one, because he is God, never ceased to be God. You can't cease to be God. And yet he became incarnated at a point in time. And therefore, he is both God and man. And he came as a man in order to show us, demonstrate us, to us how yeah. to relate to God. Yeah. And so when he's talking to his father, he's talking as a human, you know, mm. a sinless one, but a human. Well, I used to, I used to believe that Jesus were the father. I, I believed that for a great long time. And, and When I read scripture, just like when I was reading scripture with Jehovah's Witnesses and they were telling me Jesus weren't God and Jesus were an angel, blah, blah. As I move on and I'm reading scripture, it's not telling me that Jesus is the Father. It doesn't say that. And yeah. I have to speak out against that because it's not truth. Mm. And, and I, I can throw you loads of scriptures. I, I mean, go to, go to John and you've got Jesus is talking about the Father, he's talking about himself, and he's talking about Holy Spirit. He calls Holy Spirit E, he calls the Father, do you know what I mean? It's like, how, how is that not talking about three persons? Mm, uh, exactly. I, I can't see, I mean, I was a bit like you, I would have, I would have, um, because I wasn't sure how to, how to, rec how to work out in my head about three gods, one per, do you know what I mean? Uh, sorry, one God with three pers personages. Because I, I couldn't work that out in my head, head properly, I tended to lean towards what you were saying, that God, uh, Jesus is the Father, uh, Holy Spirit is God, and, and, G, and Holy Spirit is Jesus, all that kind of thing. But, like you said, as, as Scripture comes along in that, um, and you get to understand it more, especially with the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, to me, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's defi definitely uh, one God, three personages, but I don't, I don't see that Jesus is the Father, and the Father being the Holy Spirit. Do you know what I mean? I just see three personages and it's one God. The three three lots of them make up one God, you know, to me. That's how I see it. And, and, and that's the thing, though, PJ. It's like, who, who can actually know the true nature of God? You know, he's out of where we are. He's out of this mm -hmm. construct or confines, however you want to look at it. He's out of that and we're in it. We're creation, mm. he's the creator. Who are we to say that he can't be three persons and one God? Who are we to say that? Exactly. You know? Right. So when, so when people say, well, who is he talking to, like on the cross, like we started out, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, he's obviously not talking to himself. And because he's also human, the human is talking mm. to the yeah. God and, yeah. and saying, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. You know, so... Um, and this this solves the problems. I mean, it like I've I've got on the screen here about those three views that I told you, you know, about um, tritheism, modalism, and the Trinity. And so I listed all the scriptures. Let me put this link in the chat. And and, and just saying that, Paula, like, and I, I don't know whether you agree with me on what I say about this, like, but wherever there's an ism, there's something dodgy. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wherever there's an ism, there's something not above Bard. I'm not talking about you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a, a syllogism, actually, for on the Holy Spirit, especially being a person, um, where I, I list the scriptures first, and I said the premise one is only persons can be grieved and only divinity can be blasphemed. Is established in scripture and then premise two the holy spirit can be grieved and blasphemed therefore the yeah. holy spirit is a divine person it's sound logic and it's based on scripture and the premises are both true then there's no escaping the fact that the holy spirit is also a person of the trinity yeah jesus describes him as he yeah uh, well yeah. It, 
that's pretty interesting though, because like uh, the the word spirit in both Hebrew and Greek, ruach in, in Hebrew and pneuma in Greek, where we get pneumatic and words like that, yeah, they yeah, all pneuma. mean spirit, wind, breath. Yeah. And so, but that word spirit has grammatical gender feminine in Hebrew and neuter in Greek. So she and it, the only he is the comforter because comforter is a masculine noun. That's the only reason to use he with it. Yeah. But we can't assign biological gender to, to God. We can why, to why, the incarnate if, Christ. If, well, look, let me put it this way, Paul. Why would Jesus say, I will send the comforter if he's sending himself? Exactly. It, and yet they're mm, all God. Th this is where like, it, it, it worries me because it's like I can't understand... It, it it sounds like he's almost like a schizophrenic where he's talking about himself in three three persons, but it's himself, if you know what I mean. Right. It, it, it don't weigh up like why would you why would you why would you say my father if you were talking about yourself? Why would you say mm -hmm. and he the comforter, the Holy Spirit, if you were talking about yourself? It don't make sense. Yeah, mm. yeah and I um I happen to see the chat, but I'm, I'm trying not to pay attention to it. But when when you say when somebody says Trinitarians are not Christians, uh, sorry, that is false. Salvation is by faith in Jesus who rose from the dead. That is what a Christian is, and we all believe that. Uh, so that's a false dichotomy. I, but, I agree. Just like I said earlier, when I mentioned like everybody thinks that because um, Catholics are Trinitarians, then that's it. It's out at window. There's no such thing. Do you know what I mean? Oh, but it, it's, absolutely, it, it's ridiculous. And it means that you're blind to deception that Satan can weave on this earth. Well, here, here we go again. Vince telling you I'm um, married last week to my Gordon of 23 years. Wow. Talking Congratulations. Fantastic. <laughs> it's good. That's awesome. I've got a... A thing to, to look at on uh, Isaiah 6 or 9, 6 and 7. I've got that on the screen. But the, the question is everlasting father, what Jesus called as a lasting father. Yeah. And we have a footnote here. Uh, this is the Net Bible, New English Bible. It says this title must not be taken in an anachronistic Trinitarian sense, which means this section, as uh, this whole context is not about the nature of God in the first place. It's about a prophecy of the Messiah. Anyway, to go on here, um, it says, rather in its original context, the title pictures the king as the protector of its people. That is to say, the father, like we would say, George Washington is the father of the United States or something like yeah. that. We don't, and he will always be the father of the United States because he was the first president, you know? So in that set, that's the sense of this context that they're saying here. They say this figurative idiomatic use of father is not limited to the Bible. And they give examples where other things, you know, kings call themselves father forever, our everlasting father, um, the, the emphasizing the long reign. The New Testament indicates that the hyperbolic, which means exaggerating language, as in the title, Mighty God, is literally realized in the ultimate fulfillment of the prophecy for Jesus will rule eternity. So Jesus will rule eternally. Yeah. And in can, that can, sense, he is the father. Yeah, I just want to jump in, and I said we weren't going to be addressing chat, but um, Sergio, mm -hmm. not, we're, we're not arguing that that there, in, there is only one God. We're not arguing that. What we're trying to argue is that God, you can't understand God, right? We no no man can understand God, right? It could be three persons and all be one God. To say that that's not possible is to think from a fleshly mind. You know, what I'm saying is when you read scripture, it describes God as three persons. And I, I challenge you to prove me otherwise. And we one, should remember one, too that the father, the terms father and son have no meaning if they're the same person. That yeah. would, you know, oneness would make Jesus his own father. And he calls yeah. himself father. Mm throughout that makes his sense. yeah it it cannot be and yet they're all called god what we have is what the scripture gives us they're all called god there is one god and jesus is one of it's also human um 
and I've, I'm just kind of slowly rolling these scriptures on here, like where, you know, the, the Father will, I, I the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Father will I, say I really my get name. That it's, I really get it. it's a triggering topic because at the point hour between my Jehovah's Witness walk and my God is one person walk, yeah, mm -hmm. this would have triggered me. And I get it triggers like, but, you know, we all believe that the only way we could be saved is through Jesus. So why does it have to be triggering? Why can't we talk mm -hmm. about it? Right. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> I got, I got another thing up here. Let me put the link in the chat just real quick Of that says the term father was never a standard recurring epithet for God in the Old Testament, only used of God 15 times. So with the way the Old Testament, which Isaiah is in, is using father is not in just that God, the entity is called father. And God could not have been father until the son was incarnated because he became the son at a point in time, as it says in Hebrews one. Um, let me look at that real, let's go get uh, Hebrews one up real quick because it distinguishes him from angels and everything. It says, after God spoke long ago in various portions in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets in these last days, he has spoken. That's a finished thing to us in it just says son. So in a son, well, we know who he spoke through because it says throughout the New Testament, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he created the world. So this son also created the world, but he appeared in these last days. He is the representation of God's glory. And when he had accomplished cleansing for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. How is that even possible <laughs> if, yeah. if they're the same? <clears throat> Um, and then it goes on talking about how superior he is to angels. And even Hebrews 1, 8 here says, of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So God, See, your God has anointed you over your companions with the oil yeah. of joy, rejoicing. When, when you're on about Jesus at, at right under the Father, is there because he's intercessing for us, you know? Is there like saying, Sergio's sinning, Paul is sinning, Michael sinning, but he's speaking to the Father directly, saying, like, I'm there between them. But how is he doing that? And all the spirits on earth working his magic. Do you know what I mean? It's Right. And I know you could say, like, well, you know, you can't put any bounds on God, but then how can you put any bounds on God and say he can't be three people in one? <laughs> you know what I mean? Norman Cross says, even humans are three separate things, yet make one. We have a mind, body, and soul, all separate, but working as one. Exactly, exactly. And I'll, I'll go further as well and say that, like, your soul is made up your, of your mind, your will, and your emotions, which is three things also, you know? The, the, the problem, as I see, is if you're going to say Jesus is the Father and he is the Holy Spirit, then you've got a Bible full of contradictions yeah. that you've got yeah. to defend. Yeah. Right. I mean, in John 1, 1, and I think verse 14 also, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. How can you be with and the same may not be something we can really grasp, like we can't grasp eternity, but we believe in eternity. Because and that also echoes Genesis, doesn't it? Like, let us make man in our image. So when he says, let yeah. us, who, who's he talking to? Mm -hmm. Right. And it can't be the angels because the angels don't create. Exactly. No. I mean, it, we just read that in Hebrews in John 1. John 1, right? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can't be the angels, and there was nobody else around. Then who is God talking to when he says, let us? And the, and I went in, in this article, I've got up my debate transcript, that the so-called uh, royal we wasn't even a thing or in, during Bible times. The, nobody did that then. Right. That came much later, I think, at least no earlier than the Middle Ages, this royal we. So it wasn't as though there's just making a respectable term because it also used a singular verb with it. Let us make, you know, an hour and then he and my, you know, they're used interchangeably with this plural noun Elohim. And so they can't use that as saying, you know, like Michael Heiser, of all people, is an expert on ancient Semitic languages and cultures, 
he believed in some kind of divine counsel. And I have to watch again to remind myself the details, but I, I have to disagree with him because God is his own counsel. He, he doesn't need, he's perfect in himself, does not have loneliness. Um, as to why he created people, the Bible doesn't say it's all speculation, but he made it clear throughout the Bible that he made it so we could love him. And, you know, and it, this is just something he wanted to do. And so what we chose to do with that is our problem. But the point is that God didn't need to make us to be we or I. So anyway, I, I think the Bible is extremely clear. Um, I went over John 1.1 1, 1 in great detail on my debate thing here. Well, so John, the entire book of John is all yeah. about, you know, divinity of Christ. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. like Sergio, you, you, you'll argue against Trinity, but you also get people arguing with you who don't even think Jesus was God. You know, it's like that that baffles me as well. It's like, how can people not understand that the, the only reason they put him on the cross was because he was claiming to be God? Sanhedrin and, and, and all the Pharisees and that, they knew that. That's why they wanted him right. dead. Right, I got that <laughs> highlighted on the screen right now. It, 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 from John, yeah, it, it says, uh, very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him. And then later on they said, yeah, we're not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. he says in his long prayer at, at the Last Supper, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. And who's he talking to? You know, he's, he's got, if he's not talking to himself and he's both are called God in both testaments. And I went over all the details in this debate transcript. There's no other conclusion to draw from what scripture gives us than that he is both and he is God and he is man. And sometimes he'll, he'll refer to himself as the son of man and the son of God and son of is a part and, of, or like a son of Israel is a, is a Israeli citizen, you know. Uh, and um, I, I've got to thank Tenth Man for telling me this, like, but you know, God's love. Mm -hmm. It's all about love, you know. Like it, the entire Bible is. It, it's almost like a love story. It's how much He loves us, and the lives that He'll go to in order to right. accomplish His plan to put things right. But how can how can God love? If he's just one person, that means he loves himself. Mm. And that right. doesn't make sense. But the fact is, it's like I showed in that little section I had up briefly about the Trinity and that syllogism, is that each one of them, father, the ones called, you know, the instances where the, the word father is used, son is used, and Holy Spirit is used. Each one of them, if you look at all the verses that talk about them, each one of them is called God and they can talk to each other. So there's only one conclusion you can draw from that. You can't just dismiss or explain away things like, uh, you know, what Jesus said on the cross or when he was baptized or uh, like when people say, my Lord and my God, and yet also there's only one God and yet Jesus and the father are called the savior and yet they talk to each other. I mean, you just can't get around this. No. When you look uh, at all I mean, the scripture, where, where is it? John, is it John? Um, is it John 17? Is it uh, 18? Where it's his prayer to God, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, it, that pretty much that entire book, uh, verses about his prayer to God, right? So, is he praying to himself? That do not make sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right? And that's what the you, proof text that people go to when they want to say that Jesus is not divine at all and yet he's mm. called God I mean they you have to ignore something to take one of the extremes that's just the way I see it yeah but like you know how, how, how can anybody know without coming out of it, without going to heaven or coming out of this construct how, how can we truly know how God works and, you know, I mean, it, but we have what it says in, in scripture, Jesus' words, and, you know, it's like, 
he describes himself as three persons. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, I, I was supposed to believe them scriptures or not. Or, or I was supposed right. to put his own interpretation on it. I was supposed to say, well, that can't be the case because um, Catholicism teaches it. You know, does that not sound like the twist that devil puts on things? Exactly. Yeah. And when it says, uh, like in Matthew one twenty one, and it says she will be, give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. What mere human can save people from their sins? And yet. Like I said, there's all these other instances where all three of them are individually called God. And so they're, and yet they talk to each other. I, I, it bears repeating because there's no way around it. The scriptures say both things. They have each three, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit spoken either individually or to each other, having conversations, and that each one of them is God. What people do with that is their business, but. What I see is the scripture gives us no choice when we consider all of those things to believe in the Trinity. Yeah, I don't that, see a way that's around exactly it. what I read. Yeah, and, and we're supposed to believe that these words are godly inspired, you know, right? So, how can we argue against it? And, and then you've got to think, you know, I keep saying it and I'm, I'll say it again we're, a, we're flesh. We're humans, we're in this construct, right? A fleshly man can't understand God to be three persons and one God. Does it don't no, make sense, no. does it? You know, and, how can you be three but one? Natural mind, you know what I mean? A natural mind can't understand exactly. supernatural. Yeah. How, yeah. How can you be three but one? But we're not expected to be able to think them ways, you know, but we can read that. It's. It blatantly says in you read Book of John, it it basically describes three persons and one God. And then there's Hi. there's uh, Isaiah fifty two, you know that long that chapter about that's a prediction of how Jesus would die, etc. And it says you know he was pierced for, and crushed for our sins. He the yeah. punishment that brought us peace was on him. And then it says the Lord made him an offering for sin. Well, who is the Lord? When we know, you know, speaking of oneness or modalism, who is the Lord that made this one Jesus an offering for sin? Did he? It doesn't say he made himself an offering for sin. It yeah. says the Lord made no, him. No. Uh, so then, if you want to go to when um, when it, uh, Isaac's getting sacrificed, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so in, in that way of thinking, you've got to think uh, that Isaac's dad is is the same person as Isaac. Because it's right. a foreshadowing of God the Father getting his son, who's been with him since the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. nobody created them, but they were together existing co eternally. And I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, then. No, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And then we, you know, and I went over in, in the document I've been showing the debate transcript how. Yahweh and Elohim are in Deuteronomy 6, 4. Uh, and then Isaiah 46, 9 says, Hero Israel, Yahweh are Elohim, you, Yahweh alone, and I am Elohim, and there is none like me. They're interchangeable names, and yet Yahweh, in, in the that psalm that Jesus quoted, the Lord said to my Lord, he's got two different names there too. So I, I don't know how anyone can read all the scriptures and come to any other conclusion, but that there's a Trinity, you know, they're both called the savior and they're, they talk to each other. So what are you going to do? You have to put your own personal feelings on it, whether you want to admit that's the case or not. Or you've right. heard somebody saying that, like in my case, I heard somebody saying that Jesus were an angel, Michael. But yeah, Hebrew scripture one. proved against that, and then yeah. I had people saying Jesus was the Father, but scripture scriptures don't back that up either. You know, you, right. where where do you put your truth? And then there's uh, Matthew 28: Go and make disciples of all the nations, immersing or baptizing. Immersing is what baptizo means. Them in the name singular of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit 
why say all that if, yes, there's one name for the three right here, and yet why signify the three? I mean, so, you know, what's different about the modalism than any other pagan god right. well, who, can, uh, who can appear in different forms? I'm going to add to that in a response to Sergio. Where do they speak to themselves? If they speak to themselves, then it's... It, they it's, speak to each other. Just the speaking that you know the it's like what they call it how, crazy you know how can it he says here we all agree the humanity of jesus was praying to the deity of the omnipresent god well there you go i mean jesus is also called god my god and my my lord and my god thomas said to him uh so i don't understand what the problem is oh uh, it's it's almost like you're saying you're backing us up, Sergio. What you're saying, <laughs> you know, Jesus was praying to the deity of the omnipresent God, but Jesus is the deity and is God. <laughs> but you can't. Jesus in mind form wasn't omnipresent. Though. You're trying but, to think um, with a fleshly mind, where you can't think that a God can be three persons and all be called God. You know, you you can't put yourself out of this construct to think like that. And how does he sit at the right hand of the Father? Exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's the only issue I've got. Like, you read John and you've got to, like, come up with some crazy arguments to contradict the being a trinity. You really have. Yeah, it, it, it has to contradict some part or another, each of the extremes. Um, and so they are not... Um, compatible with the totality of scripture which like i said we we take what scripture gives us it says both and and all we can do is accept that whether we understand it or not all we can do is accept it so and then somebody in chat was saying gad is the name of the pagan god yeah. that is the most ridiculous uneducated uh, and also concept. it says god not gad so, yeah uh, god. and you can't <laughs> port words from one language to another and assume that you you know that's an etymological fallacy. Um, you can't just do that because you can make nonsense out of anything if you take that approach. And th the fact is that God is just the English word, and I've traced several different etymologies on that, and they're not all what people say. Just like people say that Easter comes from Ishtar, not necessarily if you do enough research. Hmm. That's just super uh, superficial these are the things things. that you hear on youtube and that's what i'm worried about you know yeah, yeah. these are youtube that's, sayings right Be mm. because you know and i just in in the document i've been showing the debate notes i showed all the original language words for god as i went i would say yahweh or eluhenu or you know adonai um, and it's interesting in the uh, Septuagint that was made before the time of Christ by Jews, it's a translation into Greek. Every instance of the word that we would say God, they translated as Theos. And if it said Lord, they translated as Kurios. Those are the only two names they used, the Jews used in translating their own Hebrew scriptures into Greek. They only use those two words. So that kind of does away with sacred name and all that and different gods different writers it, it's just all you know all those different theories about who wrote genesis or it's like people who say oh, jesus the son means the son god you know it's, yeah it, it's like that it's a serious stretch but can't the son of because he was called the son of god and the son of man can't it also mean characteristics of well like well the thing is also son and son are only sounding the same in english that's the only time <laughs> yeah. it works and the Bible is specific not to worship the sun, moon, or stars or anything else in creation. Mm -hmm. So, That's right. I, I mean, it's just an ignorant argument to make word sounds into a theology. Uh, and if, if you really want to go into like um, what these Hebrew roots people, I, I think they personally denied Jesus altogether. They do. They they accuse us of only reading half the Bible, the New Testament, where they only read the Old Testament. They'll read the Gospels and say, yeah, he's a Messiah, but he's not God. And he just wow. came to tell us how to do the law better. I mean, like, how can I, you read the Bible and say that? 
There a, there's a guy who was one of my friends. Well, he's a friend on Facebook, like I don't talk to him, but I were in his Discord group and he's a Hebrew Roots person. And he posted a Facebook post and it said, um, The one saved, always saved, is false doctrine. It's not in Bible. Read your Bible. So I read my Bible and I get to, I, I'm not sure which which verse it is now, but it's in John. In fact, it's John 17 when he's praying to his father. And he says, all you have given me, father, I shall lose not one. Mm. You know, so it's like the, the, an Hebrew roots person must totally deny gospels whatsoever. And, okay. and, and yeah. we, we are gospels. How have you got, how are you saved? Mm. That's it. And I reckon that, <laughs> They're just cherry pickers anyway. Yeah, you know yeah what I mean? but this is just what you, you've you got to be careful what you're listening to on YouTube. What coincides with their beliefs, you know what I mean? They'll just pick that out. And say, yeah, well, look, see. Mm. That, that, that see. fallen angel Satan wants to take everybody with him if possible. You know, Jesus right. wants to save everybody who his father gave him. He will lose not one. Mm. And Jesus so, said that he would draw everyone to himself. Yeah. So if you belong to him, you're going to come to him and you'll never, ever lose your salvation. But Satan will teach otherwise. You know, he'll teach yeah. you false Christ. He'll teach mm -hmm. you things that aren't in the Bible that, to be true. He'll tell you that, mm -hmm. oh, because Catholicism teaches Trinity, it's false. But yeah, Trinity teaches all the things about Jesus. That Are you going to throw that out? Mm, exactly. you know <laughs> right yep it all comes together and, and can lead you to problems later on if you just ignore parts or just yeah. gloss over or listen to somebody on the well, youtube a, a, a question <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put to you pal and you'll be best to answer it to me like and i'm not answer really but does it matter whether jesus is one or jesus is free you know do, do, does it really matter it does. I mean, when you say that Jesus saved you and that he hears everything you pray to him, you're calling him God. I mean, and you're, you, there's no way around it. It's just like when I it was in criticism of the Catholic Church, when they say they're just asking Mary to pray for them the way they would ask a friend. I'm like, can you're telling me that Mary can hear all the prayers of people in the world. That's something only God can do. Mm. You're calling That's her good. God when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it matters whether we know who Jesus is, because he isn't just any, he isn't the Christ of Hinduism or Christ consciousness or any of that stuff. He isn't the Christ mm -hmm. of the Quran. He, mm -hmm. He's the Jesus who rose from the dead, who came in his father's name, who the Bible all writes about him being God, because no one but God could die for our sins or hear our prayers or enact the new covenant. And so if we don't say he's God and we don't acknowledge that he came, God came in the flesh at a point in time, and that's when the father-son thing started, um, these are just basically knowing who it is who saved you and who you belong yeah. to. Yeah. How can you not know anything about the person who adopted yeah. you? you and, and, and that reminds me of the scripture, and it, you know, probably it might not even be right in what, to tie into what you're saying, but... There's that scripture where Jesus says, uh, one of the disciples says, well, we're not casting out demons in your name. And Jesus, well, I, I never knew you. Right. And mm -hmm. that worries me. <laughs> Do you know what right. I mean? I, imagine, imagine standing in front of God and he turns around and says to you, I never knew you. I know, that is the most scariest thing I could ever think would happen. Exactly. I, hear that. So I, I think it's important that you need to know. Who it is, right. who you think is God, and who you're praying to. And on, just to balance that is where it says that God is not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. So it isn't as though God is looking for an excuse to reject somebody. He's he's hoping, that, or not hoping, it's not the wrong word, but uh, his will is that everyone accepts him so no one is lost. But he won't violate our free will. And so some people choose not to accept him, and that breaks his heart. But the point is that once, it, you know, it isn't hard to belong to him. It isn't hard to be someone he knows. All we have to do is acknowledge that Jesus rose from the dead and 
that he is God, our savior and accept him as such. And we're in, we're just in, there's no questions asked after that. We have signed the adoption papers and not even we can undo that. And I, I have a, on the screen, a list of things that happen when we're saved. All of that would have to be undone to make you unsaved. And I'll just read this real quick. I won't read all the passages, but we're declared righteous, become children of God, clothed with Christ, belong to Christ, not ourselves. We're heirs according to the promise. The flesh was crucified. You can't get that back. Redemption through no. Jesus' blood, forgiveness of our sins, became God's own possession, sealed with the Holy Spirit who guarantees our inheritance, made alive with Christ, raised up and seated with Christ in heaven, in heaven, brought near to God, have peace with God, citizens of God's household, sealed for the day of the redemption, buried and raised with Christ, made alive and forgiven, died, but now life hidden with Christ in God. I'd like to see somebody undo that. Protected from the evil one, given eternal life, not conditional life, set free and purified, born again, given an imperishable reservation in heaven, ransomed, kept from falling, God's temple, washed, sanctified, justified, and a new creation. I want someone to tell me how they can undo all of that. Yeah. And yeah. I just want to point out, you said protect from the evil one. If you're not praying to the right Jesus, how are you getting protected from the evil one? Exactly. exactly. You could be praying to him, essentially, do you know what I mean? Mm. Exactly. We and have that, to know who we're you open to all kinds of deception. Hi. Yep. So, and if our security, our salvation isn't secure, then all the talk of eternal life and I will keep you safe is all lies. That's, that's what you have to say when you say salvation isn't secure, is to say the Bible is filled with lies. Mm. I mean, it says 1 Peter 1, 4, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, not by you. And you are not your own. You were bought with a price was another passage. I mean, you're not your own. You can't take yourself back, no matter how hard you try. And the, 1 Corinthians 1 says that there will be people who he made an analogy of, of your the things you did with your life as being like a building you made, and it will be set on fire to test it. And some people will have, you know, if they use good materials, they will get many rewards. Others, the entire structure will burn to the ground, but he himself will be saved, it says, though as one escaping mm -hmm. through the flames. Yeah, it means we were redeemed. I mean, we, uh, we were bought back with a price. That's a price. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, salvation is a gift. I mean, since when yeah. does God take a gift back like that, you know? Right, and you can't hand it back to him. You can't make him take no. it. No. It, you're not your own, so you can't give anything back because you did a one-time thing that can't be undone. Uh, um, yeah. f and for those who don't think that Jesus is God, you know, what my loving God becomes flesh and dies, gets humiliated and beat and dies on the cross yeah. so that you could be saved. Mm -hmm. How, exactly. you know, when I said earlier, it's a love story. That's what the Bible's about, you know, how God mm -hmm. putting it right, what's gone wrong. The degradation of it, like being spat on and everything like yeah. that. I mean, that's awful. The torture he went through was awful. That same man who died on that cross and took all them beatings up tells you mm -hmm. that he's not the father. He tells you that. Why would you not listen? Right. I, I just don't see how we can, whether we understand the nature of God is not the same question as whether we understand what the Bible tells us about God. And it's telling us there is a Trinity and it tells us that Jesus is the person of the Trinity who took on human form at a point in time. Yeah. yeah. And that this one is the one who did that to live, die, and rise again so we could be reconciled to God. That's, that's the salvation. Reconciled with God, not, G you know, reconciled with God. He, Jesus comes to reconcile us with God. So how can he be the same person? That's God reconciling himself with himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what he, I mean? He intercedes for us. So what he's doing, interceding, is being a mediator between himself and himself. You know, it's, you know what I mean? Right. There's just too many instances where it's like when Jesus said, I won't leave you as orphans. I will ask the father and he will send the comforter. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, there's just, I don't know what, how you can spin that yeah. into just putting on different hats, you know, or wearing and, them all at uh, once. And that's a good one that's in Jehovah's Witness Bible, Paula, because that verse in Jehovah's Witness Bible hasn't been changed. And, and Jehovah's Witnesses teach you that um, Holy Spirit's a farce, but it reads in their Bible that it's called E. How can a farce be called an E? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know personalize I mean? it. You don't personalize it for. But that's what I love about scripture because if you, Jehovah's Witness, you said to me, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. I read, read my Bible. I'm not Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's the power of scripture. You know, you can see exactly. past all deceptions. Yep. Like it says right, right here in Philippians that I had up on verse 13 for it, it, 13, for it is God who is empowering you as he sees fit in your will and your activities. And then it says, do everything without whining and arguing. That's a hard, hard one for most of us. But I, I think, you know, earlier on when there's a statement about if you're a Trinitarian, you're not a Christian, that shows a lack of understanding of what the gospel is. We're saved yeah. by faith in Jesus, not yeah. by having the correct whoever side you want to be on understanding of how that works what we know is we're saved by grace through faith in the jesus who rose from the dead yeah. and that's all mm. yep. all right amen that is that is the truth Thanks. power you know it's a small frame of mind it tells me that comes from a deception i, I think it's possibly a lack of maturity i don't know in any individual case because i'm not god i'm not going to divine somebody else's motives or qualifications but even though that's been done to us but that, that, times. that's why it's a it's a careful path to walk you know because yeah. these people also understand that you can be saved through jesus you know what i mean it's it, right it's even, awkward it, like but what my, my point being is we it shouldn't be something that we fall out on you know, we should yeah. not yeah. talk about it without being, you know, you're a stupid Trinitarian, you believe what Catholics say. That, that's silliness. Yeah. I, I mean, the same thing happens on a whole bunch of topics, whether it's free will, Calvinism, uh, eternal security, the timing of the rapture, all sorts of things that people just get very unchristlike about when they encounter mm -hmm. someone they disagree with. I mean, we get accused of not being able to tolerate disagreement, which is why I started with that definition of a cult. But the problem is that that door swings both ways, that people who make that accusation are, are being intolerant, at least as intolerant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see why they think they have moral high ground when they call us these things just because we disagree with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be that way in Christians among Christians because no. it, it says we're a body and when one part rejoices, all the other parts rejoice and when one part suffers, they all suffer. But we don't see that well, happening. We see one part attacking another part. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, that is what we see. That's that the carnality of mine. It's, it's right. right. And it, it just shouldn't be that way. And I, that's why I, you know, I've said before in, in other private conversations that I learned a lot of what I learned in debates. And I did research because someone asked a question I couldn't answer. But at this point in my life, I think after 50 years, I, I shouldn't be still in need of that much uh mm -hmm. honing although i have i'm have a long way to go to understand the bible and to walk the walk better as we all do we'll never arrive at that in this life but the point is that there you know people say you should seek truth but you're arrogant if you say you found it mm -hmm. i think it's yeah. stupid to pursue something you're never allowed to catch <laughs> I mean, like, like, there's not many people on YouTube, Paula, who've been reading, who, 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 I, who I've dealt with anyway while I've been on YouTube, like flat earth, scripturally related channels and whatever. None of them have been reading Bible 50 years. Like, there might be one or two, you know, mm -hmm. um, but not many. And a lot probably haven't read Bible as well as you have, Paula, who are telling you that you were wrong, you know. And, I find that an issue. But even I, if I'd I'm, never go to your parlor and say, I know more about scripture than you. That'd be stupid, <laughs> I mean, you know? there is, there's still a lot I don't know. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. But and, and that's very kind of you. Thank you. But the point is that if I do, like I've spent, when I finish my series next week, it'll be like 18 or 19 hours on one topic. Yeah. Wow. I would ask 
someone else to do that much if they want to tell me I'm wrong. Mm. And they're not going to do it. Because who's going to spend 18 hours refuting something I did for 18 hours and saying, you know, you're wrong at every point or you're wrong at these key points sure. and put in the research and the time. That's all I'm asking is what I've done, you know, I, and right. when it is, a, it is very hard to take when someone who says I've been a Christian for a year and you just don't know, you, you need to read the Bible better. <laughs> well, I'm like, well, um, just because we, you know, even if I if do encounter people who studied it 50 years, I'd be like, we can still disagree. It doesn't mean we have to reach the same conclusion. And just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I haven't studied. Mm. You know, we're human and we, we reach different conclusions and that's just and, the way it is. You know, like um, people talk about judging others and this and other like, and I think that when there's a group of people all believe in scripture, but they all believe one thing and they're judging each other. I think that's more, more worrying that they're judging each other than like you judging somebody who's not a believer. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because as it says in uh first Corinthians five, the last paragraph it's well, let me, let me just bring that up since I got some a scripture thing up here. Uh, yeah. First Corinthians five. And verse nine, when I wrote to you before, I told you not to mingle with immoral people, but I didn't mean those of the world, the greedy extortioners, the idolaters. In that case, you'd have to completely leave the world. But what I'm saying is that you must not mingle with anyone who's called a sister or brother that has all these bad qualities. Don't even eat with them. After all, and there's the key, what business is it of mine to judge outsiders? Are you not to judge those on the inside? God will judge the outsiders, so expel the evil one from among you. And so we are not to go around telling sinners they're sinners. We already know that. They know that. But if somebody calls himself a Christian and violates what God is telling them to do, then we're not to have to anything to do with them. I mean, we're talking about unrepentant sin here. You know, not our own, you know, the daily whatever common failings and we feel bad. And that's the key. I, you know, people say, I feel so terrible about what I'm done, what I've done. Am I lost? And I'm like, it's a good sign that you feel terrible. Cause if you loved your sin, then I would worry about you being lost. <laughs> yeah. If you have no conscience about it at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think you should have a conscience. If you've got a conscience about it, that's a good start. You know, yeah. you've done wrong. I, uh, what was it? Um, Someone put up Sam, somebody said about Sam's 68.4. Who said 68.64? Two Father Comfort has been. Uh, oh, singing to God, sing to his name, extol to him that readeth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. That Jah, is it, is it Jah he's trying to point out? Or the, whoever trying to point out? Is that what it is? Because of the name. Jah, you mean. Yeah, 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 so it's spelled so, yeah, yeah, man. So, what well, some people call That's him, yeah, so what? Yeah, it's a name, it all, yeah, like I said, they're all I mean, linked, aren't they? Yahweh, mm -hmm. Yahoo, Yahshua, yeah. you know, and people yeah. often don't understand parts of speech and how words change in other languages. Where, like, even in English, we'll say there we have a singular, like, uh, person, and then when it's plural, it's people. Um, and that happens in other languages and people don't understand it. Yah is not a different entity than Yahweh no. or Elohim. No. You can tell by the context who they are. Exactly. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. th these are things that get taught. And I blame YouTube for this sort of thing, me, Paul. I really do. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of things that people wouldn't and, be exposed and I, I'm, to. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. saying that because I've been down them paths and listened to people, you know, and learned a load of rubbish and then when yeah. i really bother myself to read my bible and pray not just reading it like you know praying look father show me yeah. what it means <laughs> do you know what i mean I, we aren't doing well, that I, you can't go to youtube and expect somebody to tell you that and then you're not put that due diligence in and pray and ask that is that what it really says Exactly. I mean, even even a letter can make a difference if you haven't read it properly. I had if someone, it's better best to go and see it yourself. Uh, like you'll a letter. this parlor. You can, yeah, sorry, please. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you'll attest to this, pal. You can read the same book over and over again, and the more times you read it, the more things that you get enlightened to. Exactly. And, and I'm I'm only just going through this. Like Paul's been doing it fifty years. Like, yeah, and I and I think, yeah. it, um, as I've said many times, that we are as parts of the body of Christ. We each have a different gift and a different skill set. And we need to work together. That's the way it was designed. It's the body's yeah. designed to work together. That's why we have two hands uh, and two feet. And, and, so and the more learned, the less learned, Paula. But that's not what's happening. The less learned, they're telling the older learned that they don't know what they're talking about. Right. right. That's what's going right. off. And that, that's crazy. Right. Which is, again, why I say, okay, if you, if you want to tell me I'm wrong, show me your research of the same depth. And I'll listen yeah. to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mikey Smith's in chat. I'm sorry? Mikey Smith's in chat. Hey, Mikey. Hi, Mikey. How you doing, man? So, yeah, I mean, I could be wrong about everything. Who knows? But all I am all I know is that we're God will judge us on the basis of what we did with what we were given. And we've yeah. been given access to all the world's information and so, you know, not everyone is a linguist, not everyone is a researcher, and it isn't supposed to be like that. So we shouldn't feel bad that one person has this gift, another has that, you know. It's just that we're all doing what we're supposed to do. I, I would, I would yeah, right, that this is, uh, and this is as simple as I make it in my own head, right, Paula? How do you say my and e, and I'm all that same three things that I've just been on about mm. myself, him, and that, and I'm all one thing. Mm. Right. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me from everything I've learned in my life. You know. Mm. And that it kind of in a way brings up the thing with the with modalism is that you know I am a a woman, a wife, a mother, um, and I'm all those things at the same time, but I'm not always in that role. But that doesn't mean I'm three different people, and that's how the modalists only think of it. But what they don't think about is my my the woman me doesn't talk to the wife me doesn't talk to the mother me, you know. No, no, and exactly. since those things, are otherwise you'd be schizophrenic. That's the word I was trying to think of earlier. Like you'd be talking to yourself. That's a good, that's right. a good analogy, Paula. That's a good analogy of it. Because mm. you know, and the difference, the key difference is that Jesus said, "I, you know, I will set, talk to the Father, and He'll send the Comforter." I would never say, "I'm going to talk to the wife me and send the mother me to do <laughs> something." You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this guy's phenomenal, yeah. isn't it? Oh, that truth is okay. Yahweh isn't it? Uh, first well, of all, <laughs> you're going by s syllables. Second of all, it's why it it's Yod Hey Vav Hey, which is an acronym that stands for I am that I am. There is nobody else that, and God is just describing himself. And he goes on in the burning bush incident with Moses to say, Tell the children of Israel, I am has sent you. And I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he's he's to identify himself by whose God he is. You can't take syllables into another language and go, oh, you got this from the pagans. That's just stupid. Yeah. And, and, and what God is this guy believing in? And what scripture are you going to talk like? Because you ain't going to talk Bible. Well, what he's doing mm -hmm. is trying to muddy the waters and say, look at all these similar sounds and similar words. You worship a false God. You're a bunch of idiots. That's all it is. <laughs> it's mud, isn't it? Yeah, this is There's not a big research. difference, right? And no one else can know, Paula, but when you've met God, you'll know, you know. Right. You know. Because you're. I, mean, I, know, I, mean, I, I know all the people I'm speaking to in this chat now, like me, you, and PJ, Paula. I know we've all met God. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we. Absolutely. that's like I said with the name Christ. Everybody wants to appropriate the name Christ into their religion. And it's, look, I'm very specific. This is the one who became human at a point in time, who was seen alive, who was watched die, put in a grave for three days and three nights, and came out supernaturally, and people saw him, up to 500 people saw him. And this mm -hmm. is the Christ I'm talking about, not some Christ consciousness, not some good over evil, which you can't even so. define without God. I mean, 
that's how you that's how God described himself to Moses. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. I I am that yeah. I am in it. Yeah. I am, yeah. And, and, and I then am. go and read how many times Jesus calls himself I am. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that people don't see it. Nobody's saying you're trying to insult anybody uh, to overcome. You show me where <laughs> Jesus claims to be God in Bible. Uh, countless times. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we just spent an hour and a half doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I mean, but people be like, man, they don't say that. It's like, wow, you've not read Bible then, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and quoting Wiki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The, old, the old point, and that's how good God is, because, you know, it's beginning from end, you know. It, the old point in him dying on cross where he claimed to be God, that's why, you know, it, it's just a perpetual loop uh, how smart God is outside of this creation. And when, when people say the pagan god El, El is a generic word for God. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's generic. It was used in the Old Testament for pagan gods. That doesn't uh, mean that uh, El in the Bible yeah. is a pagan uh, it, god. Is my name, PJ, Mick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pagan Mick. god. <laughs> Even the angels had L on it, Michael, Gabriel, you know what I mean? Yeah. L at the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it, I, it, I suspect this is the sort of thing that you find on YouTube. Mm. Right. It, Night and Norman. Yeah, and people could get this information before, but it wasn't as fast and easy as it is now with the internet. But at the same time, it's a double-edged sword because we can get to the truth faster as well. You know, like for, I, I hate the term conspiracy theory, but a lot of things that have happened, false flags and whatnot, people are finding out a lot faster that they're false flags because of the uh, internet. So it's a it's a double-edged sword. We all know where conspiracy come from, didn't we? Like it was to do with Jeff K, wasn't it? Uh, right. People would be talking about that forever. But yeah. but that that's the thing is, is people who want to hide something will throw all sorts of alternate theories at you yeah. so that you're confused. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and I'm not saying truth over comfort has that as a motivation. I don't know their motivations, but I'm just saying I've seen this many times before. And that's been the attitude has been that I read such and such somewhere. Therefore you guys are worshiping a false God or therefore uh, how can you know that the Bible is true and, and all this stuff. And Again, I, I don't know or care what this person especially individually is posting this stuff for. I'm just saying it's pretty meaningless because, you know, why post it at all if you're not trying to start anything or confuse anything? It's, it's not like we haven't come across this information before is the point that we've seen all this many, many, many times before. We do know what the Internet says. We do know that. Uh, like people will say that Jesus is from Jesus, which is yeah. another very stupid argument. But I, I, the point is, I've seen this. I, I, that's a witch it saying that. Jesus. Yeah. It's actually how you say it. It's actually how you say it in Spanish as well. Jesus. But I know it's not meaning to say he, Jesus, but it's saying Jesus. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so Jesus even is mentioned in Acts. I mean, it, it's called Deus there is the form, because that's another form of the name Zeus. And here we go, oh, you believe in the deity of Christ? You believe he's Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey John, how you doing, man? Yes. Yeah, uh, this is what passes for intellectualism today, and it's just, it's just sad. I, I'm not saying, again, that this individual here in the chat is trying to be intellectual or anything. I'm just saying, what's the point of posting those things if you don't mean anything by posting it? What made you want to post that stuff? Because we've seen it all before. Right. So, yeah, True Father comes at saying, I'm trying to not muddy the waters. I'm telling you things I've found. Well, my, my answer to that is not everything you found find is the truth. Definitely not, especially yeah. if it's from Wiki. But thank you anyway. That's the thing about discernment. We, we have to be, especially as Christians, very careful what we hear and accept. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one thing to hear other opinions, 
But if we don't accept them, it doesn't make us close-minded, as some people say. They say, oh, you won't listen to my theory about, and I'm trying to do a bad accent. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I mean. But, you know, because you won't listen to me, then there's something close-minded about you. No, I won't listen to you because I've heard it 5,000 times from other yeah. people. Yeah. It's not new. <clears throat> No, mm -hmm. no, it's not new. No. Sorry if I was yelling. I, you know, I just get into it. <laughs> no, but like you know, it, it, it winds me up sometimes, pal, and it gets me passionate. You know, it's like you have a book that's there to tell you all them truths, and you want to go on YouTube and deny that book, but mm. you'll tell people about that book even though you've not read that book. Yeah, mm. <laughs> that's what you the get. The same passions of people that seem like closed mindedness. Is the same persons or people that won't come on this show because it's a biblical one. You know what I mean? So where's the closed mind? It's where who's the one that's closed minded? You know, right? <laughs> the one is meant. To, the one is meant to profess. Well, like just come here. I, I like to learn everything. I like to know everything. So all information is welcome. He, the, they're the ones calling us closed minded, but the same person or person are saying we're closed minded because he, I think he's sorry. I think he's, he or whoever has been closed minded because. They won't come in to hear this information, but they'll be hypocritical and say, look, you won't come and listen to the information I'm on about. So it's see the exact same mindset and the exact same arguments from ballers against exactly. exactly. There's no difference to it. Like it's all some kind of cognis. Mm -hmm. I, I even think it's supernatural, like sometimes. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm sure, you know, and, and like I said, it, it, it's a bunch of misdirection and confusion is deliberate. I mean, but people can participate in that without knowing, you know, I'm not calling people Satanists. I, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, because sometimes that happens too. I, there, I have a very good friend who will go around calling everybody a Satanist. Um, yeah, lies come from Satan. They also come from people. Mm -hmm. And Most they... Ignorance comes from people. They don't aren't lying unless they know what they're saying is untrue. Yeah, well, so, I, I would never believe in all my life, Polly. You know, I went to Satanist. I can assure you of that. You know, and right. so if if it might have took me thirty eight years to come to the truth, it might take somebody two years. It might take somebody fifty years. You know what I mean? But just because people are against it, don't make them a Satanist. Like that's. That's silly. Yeah. I'm just looking up another verse that was posted in chat. Saying what, you Joshua, should, you must not, Joshua 27. Yeah. You yes. must not <laughs> make declarations by the names of their gods. Well, if you say God, even today, you don't know whose God we mean unless you have context. Yeah. God is a generic term. So when we say God in English right now, if you're talking to a Christian, you know who they mean. If you're talking to a Muslim, you know who they mean. But yeah. they can both say God, even though the Muslim would say Allah. But if you're wow. talking to a pagan, they'll say which one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to invoke something, in it says, do not invoke or make solemn declarations by the names of their gods. Am I? Are we making solemn declarations in the first place about anything and second in place are we saying Shemash or Molech or any of those specific God names yeah. we're not if we say God and you're talking to a Christian you know we mean the God of the Bible yeah. Yahweh Jesus exactly you know yeah. same, same yeah. as if you were talking to a Satanist and you said what's name of God you know what I mean he's not going to say yeah. Yahweh Jehovah Yeshua, Yahuwah you sure yeah, he's not going to say any of them yeah. and the bible even calls satan the god of this age so we it's very clear the context is everything and so when when somebody takes a proof text like joshua 23 7 with the insertion of their meaning of god as some etymological fallacy then of course that you know this is just twisting the bible it's not quoting it and saying you're doing the wrong thing, quoting from the same Bible that allegedly has pagan god names to tell us we shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, I don't understand. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've, been, also, I've I, been knocking around this kind of conversation for like five, six years. Mm. And I've heard some variations, like so I can't imagine 
variations Palazard over 50 years, you know what I mean? Mm, that's it. Uh, and mm. I, 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 there'll be no new with the Palo. No, I, I mean, like I've said before, I, I've once in a long while I'll come across an idea I haven't heard before or a word I don't know, but not very often. Mm. And certainly any of us, it doesn't take 50 years to figure out where some of these bad arguments are coming from, which is, you know, half information and, and various fallacies and word sounds and all that. It, it's just poor level research. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I have to ask why anybody would be posting these proof texts here when uh, we've seen them before. We've read the Bible before. We've read the part that says, don't worship the sun, moon, and stars. And yet people say to us, sun equals sun, S-O-N-S-U-N. Um, it's just, it's tiring after 50 years. I, I mean, my, my answer to what we're getting posted is I would assume that they've not read Bible. <laughs> well, and, and I'll tell you why I assume that, because I think the comment is from ignorance once you've read Bible. And a lot of times people say, I've read the Bible because I was, was a Christian when I was a kid and we had to read it. Or I read the Skeptics Annotated that, that, Bible. That's not reading it, though. I no. mean, I, I went to a Church of England school and we did Lord's Prayer twice a day. Mm. Uh, we went to church once a Thursday, but did I not Bible? No. As soon as I left that school, it wasn't taught anymore, and that's when it became a... So yeah. in back of my mind yeah. that I'd not even thought about it. Listen, you know? When I was younger, I mean, even though I knew, knew we could have a Bible if we wanted, but the Bible was something the minister had. You know, when I went to when I went to church with school uh, on on Easter or Christmas or whatever, the Bible was something that the minister knew about, not me. You know yeah, what I mean? they read to you, didn't they? Like, you know, you all sat there. They give you a Bible, but obviously nobody read it. You were too busy poking each other and farting and you know yeah. messing about like. But yeah. the vicar stood up from in my case, and it'll have been same for you, PJ. And I will. Mm -hmm. They're reading to you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't even get a Bible in front of me. I got hymns and psalms. That's it. Just mm -hmm. psalms and hymns. I never had the full Bible. Fact, yeah, that might actually have been what it was. It wasn't mm -hmm. a Bible. It was just songs that you'd sing. Hymns and psalms, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And I think it was Lenin or somebody like that who could, as a child, recite the New Testament from heart. Wow. Um, but it obviously did him no good, good whatsoever. He, they're just words to him. And I, I think a lot of times people will... Uh, on there's one extreme and then another extreme is where people will read the words like they're looking for an incantation or something yeah. Yeah. and, and yeah. they take the words out of their context and make them into some kind of magical spells Mantra. yeah yeah and yeah. say i prayed this prayer of jabez or i prayed you know i i walked this labyrinth this is another heretical thing but well, look look at lord's prayer yeah, it, it, you know, everybody recites that as though it's their own prayer, and it, it clearly states, Disciple, how do we pray? And Jesus says, Well, you pray in this manner, not mm -hmm. like you pray exactly like this, you pray in this manner. And if I remember right, it was just after Jesus said, Don't babble like the pagans do, thinking God will hear their many words if they keep exactly, repeating themselves, yeah. and yet right. people repeat the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not that it's bad, but. They've already I mean, got their rewards, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, big words in that. Yeah, yeah. The, the the point was they didn't, you know, they saw other groups of people with their traditions and wanted to know what Jesus' tradition was, you know, uh -huh. as a rabbi. And so he said, "Pray along these lines," and mm -hmm. he said, starts out, "Our Father," which they wouldn't, you know, start out with. But he's not giving so much a formula as an example, as that's what it, they asked him for and said, you know, praise God. You know, first of all, this is our father. And you say what you like about him. And then you say what your needs are. And, and then, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and it went, it couldn't have been a prayer that Jesus had ever made because he'd never need forgiving his sins. It's, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like Jesus' prayer, a proper prayer to his father, might I add. We're in 17. Um, Lord's prayers in what is it, Mark or Matthew? They're, they're in two different yeah. gospels, and one has trespassers and one has debtors, and people yeah. think it's Mandela effect. Yeah. <laughs> it were always trespassers for me at school, anyway. Either way, 
that's what we used to pray twice a day. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And that's not bad. Again, that's not bad. I mean, it's the only yeah. prayer a lot of it's people not bad, know. But you don't know why you're saying it, though. You're just told to say yeah. it, probably. You know, it's like, it, even if it were a prayer, what good does it have when you don't know what you're praying or who you're praying right. for? And yeah. On the other hand, it's like the uh, thief on the cross who said, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Uh, uh, you know, and Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. Um, what he wants is your heart. He mm -hmm. wants the relationship. He wants, you know, to be reconciled and that is, and to adopt you as his child. And so you talk to him like an adopted child. And, 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 and there's no pretending though, Father. Like I, I've had people saying like, well, I'll just do whatever I want. And then day before I die, I'll, you know, repent yeah. or whatever. It, but it's not, <laughs> not that stupid. Like it yeah. don't work that way. You seize your heart all the time. I mean, it's one thing to have a broken heart at the end and realize you're facing eternity and then finally you're ready to listen and you uh, accept and that's mm -hmm. fine. But people who think it's just a get out of hell free card. No, that's not that's not a relationship. No. 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 And yes. pleading for help. I mean, it, you can be saved just by saying, Jesus, save me. You know, you cry out in terror and you'll you'll at least. Well, I, I did, Paula, like I didn't have a Bible at all before I, I found Jesus, you know. Mm hmm. But it weren't a nice path, right? You know, I, I don't want to talk about it. Like it, it was some nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's like Paul said in the Bible. He said, "I'm the chief of sinners." Which there's a big discussion about what he meant by that was not the the worst sinner that ever lived, or anything like that. But the point is that he said, "I was a murderer. I was violent. I persecuted the church." I don't have the right to be called an apostle, but God called me to be one. Yeah. And if God calls, what do you do? Like, <laughs> I mean, there's been some pretty nasty people, like the guy who wrote the song "Amazing Grace." He was a running a slave trading ship. Wow! And he was an wow. awful person. Yeah. And he, you know, and it, to write the words that he wrote, you know, the guy was saved, yeah. and he was just being saved as a someone who cried out to God. And completely was changed. Yeah, when when, when you realize there's, you're not getting any lower, you know, it's like right. you've only got one choice, but to like, you know, right to God. What, yeah, it, it says, doesn't it? Like, knock, and I shall answer. You know, and yeah. yeah. When you're that low in your life, where you don't really care about your life, you ain't got many things that you think about, and that is something that comes out of your mouth. You know, and. When it does come out of your mouth, he answers. Um, to clarify in the chat, somebody says a nice slave driver. Now, he was no longer a slave driver after he got saved. That's <laughs> the point. He stopped doing a slave trade ship. And that, he wrote that, a hymn. That's a, a bit of a twist with Bible, though, and slavery, isn't it? Like, you know, it's. Yeah. It's well, not. Yeah. I did a. I wrote an article on that once. I said sound familiar, where I I made a bunch of quotes from the early American South on Baptists and people like that trying to justify slavery from the Bible, um, mm. and how they twisted it. And it was Christians, mostly Christian women, who got slavery ended in the U.S. And now people use those same exact arguments. All you have to do is change the names to keep women in subjection saying mm. it will upset the social order. And that's why I've been doing that series for a total of 18 hours or so. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, people will twist the Bible to, to but th that, any that series is brilliant like because <laughs> you're a woman parlor, but you know, far more than me. Why will not I go to you to get my understanding? Do you know what I mean? It, well, and the thing is, it's not my words. It's just no, quoting no. the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I can, you can tell me and I can go back with my own Bible and read it and find out whether you're lying or not. Right. Mm. I'll right <laughs> yeah. Biblically as well, you meant to respect your elders and go to your elders, you know, for, for, for knowledge, for, for wisdom. Like, like I said on your live stream the other day, Polly, you know, you, you're supposed to be with your wife and you're as one, you know what I mean? So why would you say that a woman can't have a vice or right it just don't it don't make sense to become one flesh it don't yeah. make sense yeah. to me like and that it all, in fact it almost sounds muslim 
Yeah, that's what Islam and uh, Mormonism have in common. And most world religions have women as just barely above animals in, in some cases. Um, and Jesus is the one, you know, in the early Christianity, it was known as a woman's religion because women were fully equal. And that created some problems of its own that society wasn't ready for. But um, but anyway, the, the point is that Jesus treated everyone with kindness. He hung around in, with... Uh, sinners, not telling them their sin was okay, but he wasn't afraid to, to mix with them and tell them the truth. And wow. they turned to him. You know, it wasn't the religious leaders. Yeah. So uh, there's truth over comfort uh, again. Truth over comfort. Tell us what name of God what is. You tell us what we should be calling God. Come on. Yeah, by the phrase other gods, you're acknowledging that God is a generic word. Mm. Yeah. So how are we using the name of other gods when we say God? It doesn't make any sense at all. On, mm -hmm. on the name of God I'm bothered about is Jesus Christ. I mean, you can crack on and call mm -hmm. him whatever you want, mate. Yep. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, that, I just don't get why they keep posting that stuff. Yeah. It's, you know, it... it <laughs> It doesn't even annoy you, does it? Like it's just like wow. It's this a bit is, like a Sean Hawkins. This is why anymore I have such a short fuse because I'm like I've seen this five thousand times. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah, it's not I like I don't have an answer. Father, like, but to me, it doesn't. If I if I were to go back two years, that probably would make me mad. You yeah, know, and I'd be bickering like. But the the more I I, I, I have me walk with God. The more I like these things, don't so much bother me. Like. Now he's saying, yeah, what is the name of our creator? Yeah, well, if you ask some people, it's Yahawashi. <laughs> you yeah. remember those guys? Yeah, what? Well, um, I call them Team Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the is, awesome, yeah, the point is, God's name, our creator's name, uh, Jesus is the creator in uh, Colossians 1. And several other places where he is the agent of creation, uh, we can say Jesus, and in, in him the fullness of deity dwells bodily. So if we say Jesus, we're saying actually the correct name of God. Or if we say Yahweh, Yod Hey Vav Hey, Elohim, all of uh, Theos, Kurios. It, you know, I give you stuff in three different languages, and they're all the one true God because those are names found in the Bible. And they're in all these. I've got some of the stuff on the screen now, Lord and God. And, and you know, there's just, I don't know what point you're trying to make at all. It's I, like saying you can't, basically, it's like he's saying Jesus ain't God, in my opinion. But like to me, Yahuwah, Yeshua, Yahweh, Yode, Vave, they all, Sound same. They're all the same. Oh my goodness. We know Sorry. they're all God, you know. The letter J. The letter, the letter J didn't exist oh my goodness. Time. Did you know that the letter E is also not no no English letters were in the Bible back then? Not one English <laughs> letter. What's the point? And I've done videos on this about following how it started out with the letter I, and then when they made it a, a capital for the beginning of a sentence in Latin and early. English, it be, it was written like a J, but it pronounced as I, and then in time it came to have its own sound. Saying the letter J didn't exist in the Bible is like saying the letter Q didn't exist in the Bible or the letter Z. None of them were there. Of course. It, it's silliness. <laughs> it is pure silliness. Hmm. This, this is elementary level claims against the Bible <laughs> and trying to lecture us on what the true name of God is from somebody who can barely write is, is the, the analogy I'm making is how many names so, has he got, Paul? Though he's got thousands, hasn't he? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean all, all coming from men, yes, of course, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and does it not even say in Revelation when he comes back, he'll come under a new name, yeah? Mm. So, I mean, if, if you're gonna tell us something, tr first of all, tell us something we haven't heard before, yeah. And then tell us why we're wrong, which you can't do with just 
cherry that, picking proof text off the surface. That, that comment, Jay, doesn't exist. Sounds exactly the same as um, Zeus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm taking this attitude because it, it people don't realize what a ridiculous argument that is. It's not even an argument. It's it's you know you you picked up something off the ground and said hey this is a valuable gemstone and it's a pebble that you found in the driveway i mean we we're not new to this we've seen all these arguments that, and we can't do all of them right now right here but the point is that you should at least have some idea do some research first like i did i like i said i've done a video just on that letter j thing Yep. I'm pretty sure nobody else did a video on the letter J. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So in the in the biblical days, I would have just been called Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I could say Theos, and nobody would know who I mean. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, but this is what we all have to be careful of, like, and, and this is the point of this stream, you know. It's like many opinions fly out there, you know, but there's only one that's true, and right. we define that truth. Yeah, I mean, in the, the passage I got on the screen about don't invoke the other gods and re be loyal to the Lord your God, there's the word God twice. For the pagan you, ones in the region. Uh, Paula, um, Sergio is asking if you've got that link for that J video. It'll be on a channel, um, Sergio. Yeah. Can look through. Yeah. If you can do a search, uh, let's see, what did I? I don't even. Re I got eight hundred videos. <laughs> I don't remember what I titled it. It's been years. Um, I I honestly don't remember. If the person to ask who might be able to find it faster was Chow Young Cat. Who isn't here today but if you see jo chow young cat ask him because he can find videos that i can't find on my own channel it's like dried like he's he's fast at finding stuff as well yeah. i don't know how to do it i don't either but they they do chow and droid mm -hmm. are the best mods yeah but yeah I, I mean chow has been i've known him longer but he he's always been getting links for me just really quick in the chat but mm -hmm. uh i i mean I have some playlists. It might be in one of those, but I can't promise you anything because, like I said, I don't remember the titles of half the things. I, I would urge everybody to go and listen to that debate you did about divinity of Christ because that, that's a brilliant debate. That. What, yeah. what are you? He were a Hebrew roots person, weren't he? Who was? The, the guy who you debated on. Oh, divinity. yeah, yeah. He were Hebrew roots. That, that's a good debate, that. Jeff Conklin says, I do speak Greek. Yes, so. Galinita. I'm trying oh, to find the channel. Is view your Cabo. channel. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then I want to find the little search thing, and then I'll go to uh, debate. Yeah. I've got several oh, debates, yeah. but um, one on eating meat, one on the rapture. Here it is, the nature and person of the biblical Messiah. Yeah. Uh, let me get that and share if it'll just load the page. Let me... That was a good debate. Uh, I enjoyed it. Where's the share button? I got my screen too blown up. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. I have one edited that just has my part of it, but... Um, I think this is the full one. Yeah, two hours and 15 minutes. That's the full one. Mine is an hour. But I also have, if I can just find it. If it is that one, I watched Paul. The guy's arguments were terrible. Yeah, but, you know, he was the only person in that entire server who would debate me I and of all the Hebrew Rootsers. And then later I'm like, so did any one of you Hebrew Rootsers <laughs> think of that? And they wouldn't, they said, I, we wouldn't even watch it. It's like you begged and begged and begged for a debate and you wouldn't even watch it when I finally did one. Yeah, but my, I, my, you know, the thing I've got with these Hebrew roots people is shouldn't they be um, sacrificing animals? Yeah, yeah exactly. They should yeah, be. They've gone back to that law, shouldn't they sacrifice? I did one on called Paul and the Karaites where these Karaite Jews 
argue that they make excuses and say, well, because they claim to be actual biblical Jews rather than Talmudic Jews, which is a good a step in the right direction. But they make excuses for not having sacrifices. Um, mm. And I've, I forget the details of all that. But the point is that they make excuses and the Bible doesn't allow any excuses. I mean, you have to have a temple and a priesthood in Jerusalem. Yeah, wouldn't they have to stick to like the Levitical laws and all the grain offerings and yeah. Yeah. stuff like that? That's, yeah. You'd have to be yeah. sacrificed because yeah. that, yeah. Was, that was the way back then that were how they got around sin because right. no, no yeah. man right. dumped sin, so the only way around yeah. it was to sacrifice, right? Blood, yeah. life is in the blood, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to say I've got uh, a list of times. These are all things video. we can talk about on his next stream anyway, Paula. Yeah, there's all sorts of things we can talk about. Also, by the way, on this video, uh, my name I went by then was Bible Literalist. So if you wonder who that is, that's me. Look what services. So is Jesus the Father, though they are separate persons? No, I, I would say Jesus is not the Father. No. Uh, no, that's uh, what I'd say. Well. Yeah, no son can be his father. Uh, <laughs> but... There is one God in three persons, and Jesus also incarnated right. and became human. Mm. So it's, it's uh, unique. I mean, to say God is unique seems like an understatement. But again, people want to dissect him, and uh, it just doesn't work that way. A hard job. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're, I'm going to have to go pretty soon. Yeah, too. I was just going to say, like, we've been going nearly two hours. But this is going to be something that me and Parler and PJ are going to be doing. Um, cool. I might take one one week. It, it depends if we stream every week. Um, but mm -hmm. I still want to do one, at least one a month on Flat Earth, if possible. But cool. um, Flat Earth's not going to save you. So I think scriptural right. stuff's more important and i want to um you know go down that avenue and paul is helping me like because obviously i'm a babe in christ as they call it and you know paul is more well, well learned than me so it's a good match exactly I mean, that's it. it's a good that's match. what we're saying about parts of the body of christ we work together yeah so i mean paula does her own thing on a sunday um where she goes more deep into it like but we wanted this to be a bit more you know like we, we could have a bit of fun as well didn't we Paula? yeah i think i've enjoyed it i don't know if anybody else has but i've enjoyed it we good oh yeah absolutely and yeah absolutely. i think it's the future anyway um, and whether people come back and listen next week that's up to them and I was just say real quick to Friendly Outcast, you're you're it's like you're starting the whole two hours over again with the same questions we've already been over. Yeah, yeah, we're nearly finished now. So yeah. And other resources, links have been put in the chat throughout. So there's plenty of material to look at to answer those questions. Uh, what I'd say to you is really dwell on Book of John. Yep. Yeah, John yeah. of course. That that there's Words have meanings, like, and although it is English, you know, when you when you're saying "my father" and "he," as in the Holy Spirit, that there's some differences there. Like, it can't be the same person. Like, right? We've explained this like a gazillion times today, and and they're saying we gave no evidence. Well, we we quoted the scriptures throughout. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what evidence they're looking for. If they don't find it in the Bible, I don't know what they're asking about. Yeah. Um yeah. listen, if you if you want to believe that the Father is God and Jesus is the Father and He's God and Holy Spirit is Jesus and the Father and He's God, you believe that. I I'm not trying to run a cult. I'm just telling you what I think scripture says and Paula's telling you what she thinks scripture says. Me and Paula yeah. seem to be on the same page because what Paula says is what I read. And what I say is what Paula reads, and same with PJ. I don't know what to say to that, but I'm in no mind to want to be falling out with people over it. I think that's silly. He says you want to chat about it next week and give him the opportunity of to voice it rather. 
to just comment. Well, <laughs> it, it's your channel, Michael, but that, in my opinion, I, I never I'm want not, to be betting on my channel. Like, um, and I'm sure you don't really want to debate it, Paul. Like, Paul has helped. I, I've asked Paul to come and stream with me to help me. Like, I don't want uh, being attacked by people are debating. Yeah. You know, it's, if she wanted to debate you, then that would be up for Paul to say, yeah, I'll debate you. And maybe I'd host it like, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like, um, if you want to talk to me, Sergio, offline, I'm up into that. Like, and I'll tell you why I think what I think. The request services with that, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but have you been here all night? Because you're saying we didn't clarify or give evidence that the scripture was there. Yeah, and, and we went over the fact that, uh, like Hebrews 9 says, that God is the one who made the covenant, and it could not, the new covenant could not be enacted unless the one who made it died. Therefore, God had to die. Therefore, Jesus had to incarnate as God in order to save us and enact a new covenant. And we explained that before. Mm. So anyway, but this is going to go on and on because people yeah, yeah. are trickling in to start the whole thing <laughs> over again. But I, I really appreciate you guys having me to, today. Good. Thank you, Paula. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting a rake of comments after this video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, um, it, we've done that anyway. It's time It's time to pack in. Like We've been at it for nearly two hours. Paula wants to get off. I'm ready for bed. Um, I thank you all for coming. Sergio, uh, we might not agree on everything, but I still love you as a brother, mate. Um, so yeah, you, can also also come in. you can always come in and talk, but it's just like Michael said, you don't want to debate you want people debating yeah, Paul and that. I don't, want, I, don't Paul, I don't want Paul to think that somebody's here debating her, like, mm. uh, and I know it will talk. get like that, so I'm not inclined to have that happen. Mm. Um, go and watch, go and look at all Paul's stuff first before you uh, want to tackle it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I thank you all for coming. Um, and I thank you, Paula. Thank you, you know, for having me. It's a stabbing dark, isn't it, for somebody like yourself to be streaming with somebody who's only new, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I really, I don't know, I feel that God's at work in it, and I think it's good, you know. Somebody not, so, somebody not so learn, somebody learn, and we can bounce off each other, and it brings truth out, you know, I think. Right, but, and, and we always go to Scripture to back up anything and and honor it as the Word of God. If we, if we can't do that, then we're just wasting our time. Exactly. Are we, we going to argue as men, you know, with fleshly bodies, arguing, are we going to believe what Scripture says, you know, and it can only say one thing and exactly. people seem to want to put their own beliefs behind what it says and that's not good but right. I, I'm, I'm confident like when when, when yeah, you can only say one thing like, God's not fickle God's not fickle he I won't go, change his mind about everything you know? I won't go to my dad and call him me <laughs> do, do you know what I mean no. it don't make sense no. And the, as we said earlier, the important thing is how we disagree, not whether, because um, if, if someone, it's like the Bible says, always be ready to give an answer, meaning an apologetic for the hope that you have. It doesn't say you have to debate everybody who comes along and, um, you know, become enemies over it or anything like that. It just says, have, you know, understand why you believe and be ready to tell somebody that. But once you told them, you, you know, if, that's all you can do. Uh, and yeah, sorry, Paul. I just want to answer God this question. Sure. I just want God to God answer this question. Can God be ignorant because Jesus was ignorant of the hour? Well, when Jesus were asked that question by disciples, they were made lower than the angels, you know. So it, it, no. Yeah, but he said specifically the son. The son is talking about. He, uh, Jesus incarnated, you know, God incarnated and not, you know, that's how he's, he's speaking to that. And they asked him specifically when the kingdom of God was coming. And he said, I'm, I'm not, can't even tell you that right now. 
Not right now. That doesn't mean he when he went to heaven he didn't know. Doesn't know exactly. You know? exactly. We have to be careful. Get, it won't gain all all it won't gain everything ready till after he resurrected. Uh, he, he, he's just going around and around. Uh, like, I know. I know. We'll just keep going on and on like Yeah. If you don't know these answers to these questions, you haven't read Bible enough. <laughs> <laughs> that that's my opinion. Uh, and believe me, I've not read Bible enough, but I seem to know the answer to these questions where you've done. Yeah, just rewatch the, the live stream. There'll be links in the chat. Um, when it takes like a day or so for YouTube to, if if you have enabled live chat replay when you made the live stream. Real gear yeah, services. Right I've just answered. Yeah, exactly. We can't just answer. Just being answered, like. Yeah, <laughs> we've been running two hours, and they want to know why we won't go back and start it again right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I agree, Jeff. You never be able to because every time you read it, you read you something else gets um, revealed to you. you mm -hmm. know, it, it's constant with supernatural. Yeah, it, that book is supernatural. It's not the same as being unable to answer as we've answered before <clears throat> you got here, and you need to go back and and watch it for yourself. That's all we're saying. But it sounds like uh, this person has already got their mind made up and just wants to throw stones. Yeah. Anyway, we got we all got yeah. things to do. All I can pray for is that you know we bless somebody. If it just be yes. one person, you yeah. Know, people are stubborn. People watch too much YouTube and listen to too many YouTubers. What they do? Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> but, exactly. Well, it's been good. Everything it's been good. that I've spoke about tonight, and I'm sure the same with Paul and PJ, is that we know that to be truth, and that's what Scripture says. Um, yeah. I'd, ch I'd challenge you to tell me how Holy Spirit can be called an E, but it can be Jesus as well, and Father. Like I'd, I'd be open to know how you can twist some words to make that up. Yeah, we weren't even really. I know we've been through it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this this person that has, hasn't watched the video and wants to just come in here and scatter gun. Yeah. And no. then call it. Tell well, like, everybody, you know, that Bible is there for you all to read. Go read it. Like, you know, yeah. I'm just saying that you're claiming to be God. I'm not even getting into arguments with chat. <laughs> yeah. We've gone all night without doing it. So we're not starting now. Right. Yeah. We've finished. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I pray that you pick your Bibles up and you can check and test what we've been speaking about tonight. Um, I thank you, PJ, my wingman, you're always here. Paula, thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, you're very welcome. Are we going to do it again? Do your show again next week, sure. Yep, brilliant. So... Cool. In meantime, I'll think of what we're going to talk about. And till next week, Jesus is the truth. Amen.